Aloha everyone, my name is Dane DuPont, I live in Leilani Estates, the site of the 2018 eruption of Kilauea on Hawaii Island. Today we're going to be starting a new series where I start going through some of the drone footage that was recently released as part of an archive of a thousand plus unoccupied aircraft system videos that the USGS uh, put out. We're going to go through the, some of the better ones and I'm going to tell you kind of what I see when I look at this footage, living in the area, growing up in the area, being familiar with the area, and kind of what the eruption meant to somebody that was living there. All right, a few things before we get into it. This unoccupied aircraft system footage, I'm just gonna to refer to it as drone footage from here on out, but it doesn't begin at the beginning of the eruption. It starts on May 27th. The beginning of the eruption started on May 3rd, 2018. So we're not gonna be covering the beginning of the eruption. We're gonna be diving in to one of the most intense spots in the eruption, the night that the locals that went through it call Hell Night. It was the reactivation of Fisher 8, now known as Ahu Ailaau. So that's where we're going to start, and then we're going to progress to the end of the eruption from there. All right, there is a lot to unpack in these first few shots. What we're seeing here is an area completely inundated with lava. You have two active fissures on the left, that's fissures 22 and 20, flowing away from the camera towards the ocean and away from the Puna Geothermal Power Plant, which you can see on the bottom left there. We have a lava channel, which is fresh. This one is from Fisher 7 in the immediate foreground and it is beginning to take up areas that had not been previously covered before. And it also created the Kahukai Kipuka here. Now, the Kipuka means an area of old land that got surrounded by lava, as this one clearly is. And Kahukai was the name of the road running right through there. Now, this was a big hill, right? A very significant, old, old cinder cone that forgotten about, but created a feature that was able to raise up higher than the lava levels. Now this footage right here is not easy to go through. This is Lower Leilani Estates. This is where I spent a significant part of my childhood growing up. Many a friend in this area. My parents place is under that lava somewhere, under that mess, and it's gone, right? This isn't like a fire that comes through, scorches the land, but the land still remains. The land is completely buried, buried by about 60 to 80 foot of lava in this area. So it's radically different than it was before and will ever be again. A lot of people lost their homes in this eruption. A lot of people didn't have time to evacuate. Many people haven't been able to fully heal from this either psychologically, financially, or otherwise. It uh, put a lot of people back, this eruption. Right on the right here you can see Fisher 7 still pumping still charging down two separate lava channels. So here you can see the two lava channels coming back to the source of Fisher 7. The fork happens not too far from the source and these lava channels are continuing down through Leilani Estates, one going towards Poiki Road and the other one trying to fall towards McKinsey. Now there is a tremendous amount of gas coming out of these things. If you look at the plumes there, that's a bunch of SO2 in that. If you were downwind of those plumes during the eruption, even with a proper respirator, it was rough. It was really rough. Even being in the vicinity when the wind just changed slightly, it would be enough to get you to retreat or get you to put on the respirator. Now further to the right here, you're starting to see Fisher 8, the reactivation of Fisher 8, and further uprift, that's Fisher 24. Now Fisher 8 and Fisher 24, these are erupting in areas that have not seen many lava flows yet. So it's taking land that has been untouched to this point. That means a lot of houses are going to go up this night. It really was a crazy, hectic night. This lava flow here, as you can see, it is coming down the road. Now this is a phenomenon we've talked about before. The topography of an area is important, of course. But there's also biomass that creates resistance to the lava flows. Now that biomass, as you can see out through here, is variable. People's yards, roads, all these make a difference. The lava is going to take the path of re least resistance. And least resistance often happens to be a road. Even if it's slightly uphill, the road is still easier than getting off of the road. Now this footage really does give a good demonstration on how lava flows progress. You'll have an initial flow that'll go down, do its thing, but then once it hardens, 
is change the topographical landscape. The next flow that comes down from a eruption upslope of it is going to be guided by the previous eruption. Now this really was hell night. As the dark came, the eruption got more vigorous, and many people had to evacuate in the middle of the night. Police went into these areas, neighborhoods that they were unfamiliar with, to try and help get people out. A scene that would be recreated only one night later. Alright, that'll do it for this one. The next one we're going to be looking at May 28th, and the reactivation after a little bit of a pause of Fisher 8.